Hello, and welcome to the last step. We moved into an earlier slot. We're moving up in the schedule. What a great day so far. It was like, even we had a movie gathering last night, and every time after a show, I'll, we have a master show document, and I'll go into the block, and I'll, I'll put an idea that comes to mind for possibly the next show, and then watch what shows up to support that or give me some ideas. And sure enough, every time David starts talking, it's like, oh, there's some ideas for my show. And even what everybody was talking about today was like so perfect. I see, uh, I see Frank up there. I see Rich. Rich, turn on your camera. I'd like to see you, Rich. But let's, yeah, let's put Frank up there. Yeah, I wanted to talk about, I wanted to talk about something that was really profound for me in 12-step recovery. And that was this idea of the problem and the solution. You know, when we come into recovery, it's always, there's a chapter in the 12-step book that I read that's called, There is a Solution. And the tendency is to go straight to that, like, oh, there's a solution. But I actually never knew what the problem was. Like alcohol, drugs, whatever that my addictions were, those were actually my solution. They weren't the problem. So I never knew what the problem was. And last week when I started thinking about this, I saw so many sections in the course, you know, the problem and the answer and all these things. And it says, do you, want, do you want the problem or do you want the answer? And this is a decision every moment. It's like what I talked about in the first show, you know, the third step. Every moment I'm deciding, do I want to be in the problem or do I want to be in the solution? Do I want the answer? And in rooms, when I used to go to meetings, that was a common thing. People would say, are you living in the problem or are you living in the solution? Because it's a choice between the split mind and every moment. Am I doing one or the other? You know, and people would say, are you sharing the mess or the message? Because am I, it's like the scene from that they showed that Dan and Marie showed. Am I in the boat? Am I staring at the water? Am I staying in the problem or am I in the solution? Am I focusing on, you know, the Christ? Am I focusing on the solution, the answer? And in 12-step recovery, they actually have a line that it says, you know, the object, the main object of this book was to find a power greater than yourself to help you solve your problems doesn't say you're going to solve your problems. It says it's going to help find you power that's going to solve your problems. And that's what the whole book is. And it starts with step one, which was me admitting that I had a problem. I never knew what the problem was, you know. And then when I started hearing people speak about it, and I had experience, which I shared with you guys about in the first couple of weeks, but I didn't realize that my problem was my thinking. You know, I thought it was the drinking, the drugs and all this, but it was really I have identified with this thought system that its main objective is to keep me away from the truth of who I am. But I identified it with it so much I thought it was who I was. When I heard, it's the, I had this great metaphor, this guy Jim shared this. When I first heard him share it, I was like, I was laughing. He was such a comedian in the room. And he talked about, he goes, yeah, I'll tell you what, I got, a, I got two factories in my head. And I always imagine it being this, like, if you ever saw the Twix commercial, they got these two factories working next door. One does the chocolate and the caramel. And I pictured these two things and he would sit there and say, he goes, I got one factory that produces bullshit and I got the other factory that buys it. And he goes, this constantly goes on and business is great. And I could relate to that because I used to constantly buy all my own, you know, problems really, you know, he says bullshit, but it's really problems. And what are problems? But these are these questions, you know, the ego is that questioning aspect of my mind that constantly just throws these questions at me over and over. And I'm huge with the rules for decision. I think it was last week when Spava was on Marie's show. She asked her all these rapid fire questions. What's your favorite thing? I'm sure I'm not the only one that was answering them to myself. Like, oh, this is my favorite section. This is what I like to do. And mine is rules for decision. And I practice those every morning. You know, it's my, my practice that I'm into. And there's this point, I was going over it with someone else. And there's this point when you go from the first two, which is I will make no decisions myself today, you know, which is basically the first two. And then when you get to the third one, in the second one, it says, you know, I will not be the judge of what to do, nor will I judge the situations where I'll be called on to make a response. And it's like, okay, that's where the difficulty lies, but I have to actually see when this comes up and hand over these judgments of situations. It was like with, uh, even with what Andy was sharing in his show, this idea of, I wanna go somewhere, but then an answer comes in Utah. Oh no, not Utah, because they're crazy out there, or whatever the thoughts were, or, you know, a silent retreat, well, not that. As soon as I actually judge anything, it's that third step is, I have no question, I forgot what to decide. It's the question that's actually the problem. Because if I'm actually doing that, if I sit down and I actually go to prayer like, okay, should I go to LA or Texas? 
and then I hear Miami, well, of course it's gonna produce confusion because I've already set the parameters by which I'd respond. And this is great, we have a new retreat coming up called The Quiet Answer. And that whole section, I talked to Frank yesterday about, hey, read this section, because it talks about that whole thing, how the question actually has the answer in it. And it's, it's about dissolving, getting to a state of mind where the question dissolves. You know, we talked about this last night, we watched an amazing documentary, which was Michael Moore's, Where Will We Invade Next? And so many of his films, he used to be pointing out the problems. And then in this film, he actually points out the answers. He goes to other countries and shows where the answer is rather than just presenting a problem on screen. He shows like where the miracle is in so many different aspects of government, education, and all these things. And it was like, I was so inspired by that. So then it was like, I started writing a bunch of stuff down and certain things from the course come to me right away. Of course, when I think about those things I thought about in recovery, like I didn't know what the problem was. And then there's, we have a book, one of my favorite books that David, it comes from David's teachings is going deeper. And the whole book is about 79, lesson 79 and 80. And 79 is, let me recognize the problem so that it can be solved. And the first line of that is actually, a problem cannot be solved if I do not know what it is. So it's like, I actually have to look at these things and recognize the problem. I couldn't recover from a hopeless state of mind or body that were, was manifesting as alcohol and drugs until I actually understood what the problem was. And it was through these, those steps, and now it's carried me on to this, that has actually you know, changed my life. But anyway, I think I've talked long enough, Frank. Maybe we can hear from you. Yeah, you know, I, <clears throat> I just spent uh, a couple of hours with somebody in the program. And, um, you know, one of the things that, that was a big revelation to me when I found the course was I have... You know, I've studied so many teachings and I've been, you know, in, in, in 12 steps for 34 years. And one of the, the, the problems that was shown to me in the course was the incredible resistance I had for waking up. You know, that was to me one of the biggest gifts the course gave me, like, you know, when I came to 12 steps and I had to really look at my addiction and I saw that that is the problem. You know, it's not the problem that I couldn't control it. It's not the problem. It's just that the pro you know, that that's what I have to, 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 uh, to realize, you know, the game is over and and that there wasn't a physical action I could take. It had to be a spiritual action. And like you said before, you know, it's something, it's not something that I have to do myself. And that's where it gets tricky because in the program we hear a lot, you know, it's a program of action. And yet, you know, I don't, I don't have to do anything in the end. I don't have to solve my problem, you know. I just have to remove out of, um, I have to move out of the way. What, what is it that's blocking me? And for the longest time, you know, I, I always thought, wow. you know, if you would ask me, or if you go uh, uh, in a room, a 12 step room, or even any kind of spiritual gathering, you say, do you want to be, um, would you like to be awake? Would you like to be enlightened? And I would say, yeah, 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 we want that, you know? They say, well, why aren't you, you know? Because you don't really want to be. And that's what the, the, the course exposes and also the program does. It's just that the course goes so much deeper with that, you know. Um, and, and, and what I love about the course and the way we do it in Living Miracles is, you know, it's really, um, it, it really pushes you to expose, you know. And as I expose, Things, things keep coming up and say, yeah, I mean, this, this, this facet, this, this, there's that. And, you know, the course is very clear. I cannot help you if you don't let me. I can only help me if you allow me to, 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 if you allow me to help. 
if you allow me in there, if you allow that, that character defect, we call it in, in the cloth sets, and I've said this before, it's really a word I don't like, but it's what we use, is what, what, what's used there in the language. Um, where am I still attached to it? You know, what is the, if I let go of a resentment, I have to also let go of the pleasure of having that resentment. So, so when you were talking about the problem, what is the problem? Well, the problem is I still have pleasure in the resentment. I still think there's something in there. You know, the other day I was in a situation where, uh, you know, with my girlfriend and she said something, there's a lawsuit, law, so said, you know, this guy, he's really, it's her ex-husband, but, you know, um, he was really going to get caught on this. And there was this flash of pleasure going through my chest, you know, I said, wow, we're going to get him. You know, and that's when I exposed it. And I said, you know what? There is, <laughs> you're laughing. <laughs> you know, I had to say, I just got such a jolt of pleasure out of this, you know. And then I'm offering that. And I, I was able to offer it right then and say, you know, have it. I don't want this. I don't want this. But this, I cannot know that I have this if I'm not mind watching, mm. you know, and mind watching is what I learned in community. You know, that's the biggest gift. And, you know, I get a lot of me metaphysical information that are very helpful, but the most important is that mind watching. Where is the, where is the problem? You know, there's that Rumi line, um, maybe you know it, Jeffrey. Uh, it's not your... Uh, responsibility to find love but it's your responsibility to see what's blocking you from that and and this I'm very happy to say I find you know between the 12 steps and now with this I found a teaching that really helps me go deep down there and and open it up and and just um, mm. you know it's always this question with you know, I heard it the other day at a meeting uh, when we talk about step seven, um, when it says we were entirely ready to have God remove these defects. And then everybody butts on our said, but entirely, how can I know that I'm enti entirely ready? But that's, I'm entirely ready when I'm willing to really look where am I still attached to it, you know? And to really look where is the pleasure in it still, you know, and then that's the problem. But once I know that that's the problem, now it can be here. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that, that's the process for me too, is seeing where I still have value in these things because I'm identifying with it. I'm finding value somewhere. And what I love, and I did this with my sponsor back when I was working uh, the 12 steps, we took the whole book and you know, neither one of these books actually have the answers. All they do is change this factory and the questions that that's asking me into the right questions. So I can ask myself the right questions to lead me in the direction of the answer, which is, you know, within. And in that section, it's funny that, uh, you know, do you want the answer? Do you want the problem or do you want the answer? Right under it, it actually has that line about, are you doing what the course asks? Are you practically applying it? And then at the bottom of the page, it says the kingdom of heaven is within you. You know, once we understand that, then I have to stop take, I have to take it off of the screen continually. And that's what it does. And it's like, that's what I love about the course. I took, <clears throat> I took my whole book, my 12 step book and changed every line into a question. Me and my sponsor sat there for hours and hours and everything. We'd change it into a question so I could actually change this mind that I have that thinks I'm separate ultimately, but to change the way I think, because it's actually those questions that section that I was telling you about the uh, the quiet answer, I was like blown away when I read that the other day because there's a line in here. A pseudo question has no answer. It dictates the answer even as it asks. Thus is all questioning within the world a form of propaganda for itself. It's like, <laughs> I love that propaganda word comes back up. It's like, if once I'm, once I'm in that question, I have to rise above that. So that's actually why I keep going back to those rules for decision. As soon as I, as soon as I recognize, this is the mind watching you're talking about. As soon as I recognize I've judged the situation. Well, should I go to the movie? This is last night, you know? 
as soon as I start thinking about what movie is it, I'm already thinking about what's good for me. I've already gone beyond what the guidance is. I'm making up my own plan from there on out. You know, then it comes back to this, a healed mind is relieved of the belief that it must plan. I don't know the means, the outcome, which is best, the mean by which it is achieved, nor do I know the problem, nor can I recognize the problem the plan was made to solve. So as soon as I think any of those things, I'm gone. So it's like that mind training that you're talking about is so in the moment of seeing what I'm doing with the situation, any situation that's presented, I literally have to step back. And that's why it's like, that's why it is so beneficial to have, I mean, we've been having some calls and, you know, even not talking for a few days and then talking, it was like, we noticed we hadn't been connected. It's like, because any decision that I make, if I join with a brother, I've taken it out of my head entirely. You know, this is what a sponsorship is. And we have like 30, we live with 30 sponsors here. You know, we have people that we're more linked with, but as soon as I make that willingness to say, Hey, what do you think? This is what I'm hearing. Then it's, you know, I'm on the way of following that actual guidance. It's funny. We, we listened to uh, a rap song, an old rap song the other day. It came into mine and I, I was near my computer and I played it and it was a uh, vanilla ice, a classic, <laughs> <laughs> but one of the lines, it goes, stop collaborate and listen. I've been repeating that to myself over and over. So when I actually am starting the fence, I stop. I need to collaborate with someone. Peter, yeah, I'm not feeling this. What are you feeling? And listen, you know, it's like, so I've been repeating that over and over. I had, I get all these things like that come in as these guides, like, you know, and certainly it comes in through movies. And even when I think, think of that, that factory scene, you know, this, this factory of buying all this stuff, how do I resolve that? I stop buying. I, I shut down the, the f question factory, the problem factory, by stop believing in what it's telling me is all I can do. And I have this image of uh, trading places. I know you've seen that with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. That has nothing to do with it. But this one scene where they're on the stock floor and they already, they've, they've snuck in and they uh, intercepted the, uh, the crop report. So they know what the orange price is going to be. So they go out there and they're buying and they're buying and everyone's like, these guys are buying up the whole market. And then at a point, it switches and they just sit back like this because they're certain they have this certainty and they just sit back and they're selling. They're like, sell, sell. And everyone like rushes around them. It's like pandemonium, but they're in the middle, just like with this complete peace, like sell, sell. And that's what I picture myself doing. Like all these things that that mind, that part of the mind tries to convince me of or judging situations, whatever it is, I just sell it all to the Holy spirit. Like I just step back and like, I don't want any of it, but certain things I still buy. <laughs> like you know, there's certain things. And those are the hooks that we talk about, you know, when we talk about the hooks that are grabbing me still, whether it's around money or, you know, they're all elements of control. But once I recognize that, now I can look at it, the fourth step, the fifth step. Now I can actually look at this thing because this is the problem. Until I recognize it, it can't be solved. I can't just say, oh, my belief is separation. I can't go that. I can't skip steps as I talked about earlier. I have to actually bring that problem up and see what it is, where I'm attached to it, whether it's, you know, they're Dan was talking already about this deep need for approval. I got in touch with this deep, we watched last, last week, we watched this movie and there was, you know, I had this, this expression at the movie gathering about my father where I had this, I still have like, even he had asked, you know, to come down here to Mexico. And I was like, oh no, he's not going to like it. And I shared all that. But then all this emotion came up. Like, I don't think I actually want him to come because I'm afraid he's not going to approve of, what I do with my life now. And I shared it and there was emotion and, you know, David spoke a little and I listened and I went home that night and I went to bed and I had this dream. And let me tell you, it was like, it was so vivid. And it was me and my brother on this lake that we used to have this place in Maine. And we stepped off the lake and we walked up a hill and I'm looking down at the lake and this huge monster, this like, <laughs> like look like a sea monster comes climbing out of the water. And I'm like watching it. And it was like, I'd never had a dream like that. I woke up and in my morning and I went down and I meditated. I'm like, all right, what is this? And as I, as the, the awareness came, like, this is you letting go of this belief that your father, you're, you know, it was, it was like, no, your father does approve. Like you can let go of that belief. I had this tingling, you know, this release from my chest, some of it. And it was like, later on that day, my father, I called him and uh, about something else. And he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, your mother showed me a picture, uh, picture on the internet of you. You look like a sea monster coming out of the water. I was like, <laughs> I was like what? But I heard love, you know, that's all I heard. Like, 
<laughs> but it was like, you know, this one mind stuff never ends. It's like, <laughs> it's too funny. Uh, yeah, you know, the one mind uh, is, is th these things like what you just were uh, describing when your mother says that, it's happening to me so much. And, and um, you know, like, I, I never, I'm not that surprised by it anymore. You know, I, I just, I just realize it's, it's the one mind that, uh, you know, and these, these synchronicities. And that's, that I, I love that because it's just a, you know, a, um, a proof that this is working, you know? Um, so I like the synchronicities because they just remind me, you know, that that's the track, you know, that's, you're on that track. Uh, but you know, when we were talking about the decisions and, and when, when I think I need to make a decision and the torture of that, you know, and the time that goes into figuring out all these scenarios, and then I have it finally figured out, and I think, okay, and then, whoo, yeah, but what if that, and you know, and, and you know, I'm completely screwed. There's nothing I can do. And knowing that, you know, I don't have to make these decisions is such a um uh, is, is such a, a relief and you know the other day i had to meet with this guy here and you know it was a legal uh, thing and and um and I, I i i knew this was uh could go potentially wrong for me and then, <laughs> and, then and i was scared to walk in and then i just sat next to him and i just i was able to totally let go and i said you know you are, you, you just, I'm switching from you being a total projection of my fear now to you being a total projection of love. And something totally shifted in me, but I think in, in the meeting went really well. But I was, you know, this close to his face and I was, I didn't tell him, obviously. But, but you know, it was just, and, and that's what it is. You know, there was a holy instant there. And I didn't have to think one second. What am I going to say next? You know, it was just, that was the thought, you know, that's the miracle. The miracle are changes of perception. The miracles are thoughts, you know, and sometimes, you know, when I pray for a miracle, I just pray for the right thought, you know, the right thought in that moment to just take me out of all that hell. And, 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 and so everything went really smooth. It, it, it went really smooth. The guy didn't want to leave me like that. So I said, come on now, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I saw it as something very, very hostile. But, um, but anyway, so, so uh, you know, again, I, uh, yeah, like you said, I, I have been, I'm, I'm now in, in Switzerland and in the last week I was still in California, but I'm, I'm away from the community. And it's true, I, that's another thing I have to watch, that I don't drift away from the community. You know, today I had a long talk with you yesterday too and with Lisa today. And what I realize is, you know, once I start, see, in, in, the, in the program, we, we do a lot of writing. And then as you write, this stuff comes up. But this is 10 times better because we do it live with another person. So I expose something, and then, you know, something else comes up. And, whoa, whoa, whoa. and then within three minutes of the conversation, all this shit came up, you know. And because I'm, I'm going with it, you know. And I guess writing does that too. And uh, today when I was uh, spending the afternoon with this guy, you know, that I've known for a while, he hasn't been really that, you know, he's one of these indigo guys uh, probably because, uh, you know, he only has about three plus years in the program, but he really understands the language. You know, he understands this. And I told, I told him, you know, because we're working on this level and you can use me as a, you can express with me. You can call me anytime and you can express and I'll try to hold the space and you see what, what comes up because I see the value now uh, in, you know, I've seen it for, for a while now. This, I, I'm at the stage where this is still my greatest value in the community is being able to have that and have people hold the space and just express and, and let, the, let, let that stuff out, you know. Mm. So, yeah. And that's what's blocking me, you know? That if I don't do that, that's what's blocking me. That's the darkness. You know, and the darkness will keep me in the ego. Go ahead, sorry. <laughs> keep you in the boat, staring at the water. 
No, I was just thinking about this as we were talking about, you know, some of the stuff that came up last night at the movie gathering. And it's interesting because the next show is actually going to be Jason from the bottom up and David will be on with him again this week. And it's like taking these, these thoughts that we're sharing now of, do I want the problem or do I want the answer? And taking them to the next level, even on media and all this, like when we watch on the TV, I guess apparently there was some kids in cages, as you heard during Calico's show. I haven't seen any of that. But all these things that we see in the media that we can get caught up in, we can get caught up in the problem and stay there. And it's like, no, they're actually going to take these things deeper. And it was funny because we talked about a few things last night and even conspiracy theories. And, you know, Jason brought up a few that his father had told him and some I hadn't heard, which were pretty profound uh, conspiracy theories. But I remember my own experience with it. And this was even after I'd found, you know, spirituality. And I was driving down the highway and on the back of one of the signs, I saw 9-11 truth. And I just, you know, I thought what I thought and had certainly all my thoughts about, you know, Afghanistan or whatever, whoever was involved with the original, uh, you know, attacks or who they said on the news. And when I saw that, I actually went online to look at it. And then a guy that I met in a room gave me this video. And it was basically a conspiracy video showing all the evidence that it was an inside job. And I remember watching it and feeling so much worse. I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Like, why are you telling me this stuff? And then I saw that they were everywhere. Once you open up the doors to the conspiracy world, every single thing you look at has a conspiracy behind it. And I was like, oh my God. And it was like, but it's the same thing. It's just on a grand, grand scale. Like, do I actually want to be there? Like, take a different side? There's no difference in it, really. But it was like, I could see that I was even applying this stuff as David was sharing last night after the movie. And I'm like, oh my God, this is all the stuff that I had been talking about and this problem and answer. And this decision in every moment to stay with, you know, to stay with the spirit rather than actually have any other interpretation. So, yeah. So in a little bit, you'll be seeing some other situations that you'll try not to judge before you get into them, which is challenging when we get into these, you know, bigger, bigger media things. But yeah, we have, uh, we have a few more minutes, Frank. So I'm just seeing. Yeah, you know, it's funny when you say, you know, the conspiracy and the things we see, I was watching, Last night I was watching the nines, you know, and, um, and, and uh, you know, there's that scene where this woman who it says, I can get you out. You know, I, if you trust me, I'll get you out. And then, you know, and then there's all this stuff that she does, you know, where the ego doesn't trust her. Like she screws up his, his deal with the, you know, and then she did it with, with, the, with his show. And then in the forest, he thinks he's poisoning her. You know, and, and, and this is the ego just uh, coming up with all this conspiracy. And, um, you know, and, and this, as long as I'm aware of that, you know, once I'm aware of that, and, and you know, the, the thing I came up with <laughs> this week for me, I always come up with this wisdom, you know, for the, is that, you know, if, if I think I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a, a character in the dream, I'm screwed, you know. But if I know that I'm re that I'm the dreamer of the dream, then I have, you know, then that's that's the awakening, you know, then then I'm 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 awakening, and so um, all this, you know, is it's all unraveling, you know, it's all unraveling, and the 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 program, you know, the twelve steps are designed to do that. And as you said in the beginning, you know, it's all, there's only, there's only one, there's another line in the book that says there's only one reason the book was written is to find God. And once, and that's the, you know, in that holy instant, everything is unravel, unraveled. And the problem is we're not in that holy instant. And we believe the, you know, mm -hmm. I just believe, um, like the guy in the lines, he thought the girl was trying to poison him. You know? mm -hmm. So anyway, I think that is. Hmm? We're about out of time here. We have to uh, get set up for our next from the bottom up. But yeah, that movie's amazing. And when you were talking that the blonde girl in the woods, that's actually Lisa. Yeah. So keep that in mind. That's Lisa. Right, right. <laughs> I have to tell her, tell her that now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Lisa said she was watching. 
<laughs> so we'll see you, Frank. Are you going to be with us from Zurich or down to France for uh, no, no, three I, weeks? I think, I think. Next, uh, in a couple of weeks, I'm still going to be in Zurich. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. we'll be in touch. Stay connected, brother. I love you. Bye. <laughs> I love Bye. you too. Oh, there's Rich. He's got his camera on now. I, want, I, can't, hey. I want to see some people too. I don't know why I can't see anybody. John, Patrick, Steve, Andre. <laughs> Nicholas and Alexa. <laughs> All right. So we'll probably be back here in 15 or 20 minutes. So I'll s <laughs> 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 <laughs>